in 1909 to the Students' National Literary Society on the subject of women, ideals and the nation, Countess Markovich observed. I take it as a great compliment that so many of you, the rising young women of Ireland, who are distinguishing yourselves every day and are coming more and more to the front, should give me this opportunity. We older people look to you with great hopes and great confidence that in your gradual emancipation you are bringing fresh ideas, fresh energies and above all, genius for sacrifice to the life of the nation. No one then could have predicted with any certainty that women should secure the right to vote albeit in a limited circumstance, or could have foreseen that an Irish Republican would be the first woman to be elected to the British Parliament in an election that would change the course of Irish and British history. In May 2018, 100 years on, a new common was formed in Culmore here in Derry and was named in her honour, the Countess Markovich Common. This reflected the growth of Sinn Féin in the Ballyarnett Electoral Ward. So who is Countess Markovic? Born Constance Gore Booth in London in 1868, she was the daughter of Sir Henry and Georgina Booth. They also had a home in County Sligo, Lissadell House, to which W.B. Yeats was a frequent visitor. As a young woman, Constance trained as a painter in London and Paris. She was also a talented actress. It was in Paris she would meet Count Casimir Markovich and they married in London on September 29, 1900. She was active in the suffragette movement and advancing the need for women's rights and she was a member of the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies. In 1903, she moved to Dublin and she was soon well known in art and literary circles founding the United Arts Club with Sarah Purser and John Butler Yeats. It was at Purser's home that she met Michael Davitt, John O'Leary and Maud Gaughan. No stranger to the revolutionary change that was sweeping across Ireland, she joined Sinn Féin and Inigi Heron in 1908 and the following year with Bulmer Hobson she founded Nafina Erin. In 1913 when James Connolly founded the Irish Citizens Army in response to Dublin lockout she became a member. Indeed she designed its uniform and composed its anthem. She was part of the planning and preparations for the Easter Rising. Her philosophy, her advocacy, her women's rights and universal suffrage are reflected in the words of the proclamation. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and all of its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious to the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Constance was positioned in St Stephen's Green with Michael Mallon in command and was key to the military engagements against the British forces. She was arrested along with all her leaders, taken to Dublin Castle and then to Comenum Jail. She was court-martialed on the 4th of May, sentenced to death and on account of her being a woman was commuted to life imprisonment. Constance was in Kilmainham Jail when Eamon Kent, Tom Clark, Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, Padraig Pearce, Joseph Mary Plunkett, Con Colbert, Edward Daly, Sean Houston, Thomas Kent, John McBride, Michael Mallon, Michael O'Hanrahan, Willie Pearce and James Conley were executed by the British. In memory of James Conley, she penned these words. You died for your country, my hero, love. In the first grey day of spring, on your lips a prayer to God above, that your death would have helped to bring freedom and peace to the land you loved. Love above everything. Constance was then held in Montjoy Prison and subsequently in Aylesbury in England. 
1917, under the general amnesty, when all the political prisoners were released, she returned to Dublin. She was once more active in political work and in the reorganising of Sinn Féin. She opposed conscription to the British Army and opposed the imperialist war in Europe. She was arrested and held in Montjoy jail for her actions. Constance Markovitch stood as a candidate for St Patrick's Dublin in the 1918 British general election. The Sinn Féin manifesto for the 1918 election declared, Sinn Féin aims at securing the establishment of the Republic by withdrawing the Irish representation from the British Parliament and by denying the right and opposing the will of the British government or any other foreign government to legislate for Ireland. By making use of any and every means available to render impotent the power of England to hold Ireland in subjection by military force or otherwise. By the establishment of a constituent assembly comprising persons chosen by Irish constituencies as the supreme national authority to speak and act in the name of the Irish people and to develop Ireland's social, political and industrial life for the welfare of the whole people of Ireland. She was elected along with 71 Sinn Féin candidates and true to their manifesto commitment, refused to take their seats in Westminster. She was the first woman to be elected to the British Parliament. This is viewed as a seminal moment in the history of the women's struggle for equality. The Sinn Féin MPs formed the first doll in January 1919. She was the Minister for Labour in the first doll, the first woman in any European Parliament to hold a cabinet position. Constance Countess Markovitch died on the 15th of July 1927 and despite her outstanding contribution over many years, the then Free State Government refused her a state funeral. She was a woman who laid no store on the material world and her funeral was paid for by those she served best, the people of Dublin. She was a woman of remarkable strength and we can see this from her prison letters. Don't worry about me, I'm quite happy. It's in nobody's power to make me unhappy. I'm not afraid either of the future or of myself. You know well how little comforts and luxuries have ever meant to me. So at worst, I'm only bored. This is a rare recording of her speaking in Dublin. I have come to tell you that our republic still lives. Our republic that you have helped us to build up and helped us with your support to keep alive. Today, there are some amongst us who have grown. They have weakened, we know not why. We will never accept the partition of our country. Today we mark this important anniversary, not just in terms of the history of Republican struggle or Ireland's history, but in the history of struggle for women and their rights. Constance was a rebel, unconverted and unconvertible. She said of herself, I went out to fight for Ireland's freedom and it does not matter what happens to me, I did what I thought was right and I stand by that. I am proud that our common is now named in her memory and in her honour, we will follow in her footsteps and in her tradition. This year, as we commemorate Photo 100, we remember the role played by Constance Markovitch in securing a woman's right to vote and her role in the struggle for Irish freedom. There can be no doubt that she was a revolutionary, a socialist, a soldier, a leader and a visionary. Today, many women across the world owe it to women like Constance Markovitch for standing up for the emancipation of the working class and the emancipation of women. There is much more to be achieved and we stand on the path carved out by women like her and we are ready and prepared to take the next steps forward as we carve out the path to the Republic. Join with us, Bergi Bua.